I talked to some of the key economic officials in this country. They all seem to be speaking in terms of strengthening the role of the market, making the market decisive, not just one of many influences, reducing the interference of the government and giving more scope to the market. Well, the government in China won't disappear, so it will have some control, some effects, and for the government, there'll be a list of things that the government can do, and if it's not on that list, the government cannot do it. So that's very good, because it means everybody will understand it. But the government has a role to play in terms of externalities, environment, uh, uh, preventing monopolies when it's inappropriate, and so on. So I came here first in 1982, so right after the 1978 change. And, and I've been coming to China for more than 30 years now, so I have seen this evolution, and it's nothing short of spectacular. Uh, not just the, the quality of life here, the buildings, the infrastructure, the manufacturing, uh, but the way people think about things. So it's, it's a revolution in regulations and in mindset and philosophy. But uh, I think the, the, the philosophy of, of the leaders this time and the emphasis on uh, market reforms, on leaving more things to the market, is, uh, is uh, more intense, is stronger than it has been in the past. I thought it meant uh, improved lifestyle, that uh, partly that's the environment, but it's also increasing consumption. And we know that uh, consumption in China uh, has been growing rapidly along with GDP, but uh, it is a, a uh, lower share, a smaller share of GDP than in other countries. And so I thought one of the things that was intended by the dream was to increase um, consumption, increase incomes, but also to increase consumption of all sorts. Uh, I would hope that uh, part of the dream is to give people uh, a chance to have a higher level uh, of consumption. It is a need to let people uh, enjoy a, a higher standard of consumption. And, and part of that can be achieved by higher wages, but um, that's going to be limited to the extent that productivity goes up. Again, when I think back to what it was like here in 1982, how low incomes were and how much they've grown since. But I think the, the focus on um, GDP is such, whether it's 7%, 75 6 is probably less important than uh, the employment effects, the ability to absorb people coming from uh, rural China into the cities, uh, to make sure that people who are coming through the universities can get jobs. And that doesn't require as fast a rate of economic growth now as it did in the past because of the greater emphasis now on services. Um, you get... Um, less GDP in the service sector when you hire 100 people than you do in a highly machine-oriented uh, heavy industry. So the shift from heavy industry to services means that you create more jobs at any given level of GDP growth. So the need to absorb People from the countryside and from the universities can be achieved with a lower rate of GDP growth.